culture and its broadest sense is a reflection of human identities and way of life. The term cultural heritage has changed content considerably in recent decades, partially owing to the instruments developed by UNESCO. Cultural heritage does not end at monuments and collections of objects. Cultural properties and elements are identified as tangible and intangible heritage. Tangible cultural heritage is the heritage that can be physically seen and felt. It includes monuments, sites, buildings, tools, instruments, utensils, and all other physical objects and artifacts that are made by human create capacity. Tangible heritage, this can be your, your places like uh, Kwaito, your archaeological sites, you have rock art sites, you have the Masawa port. These are some of your cultural heritage. One of the most important culture, tangible cultural heritage that you have right now is your uh, modernist city of Asmara. So this is uh, the architectural style and these buildings that are going to be proposed right now by Eritrea to be recognized by the world as world heritage. So Asmara will be uh, considered for world heritage inscription. So that's an example of some of the tangible heritage in um, Eritrea. You can go to the museum as well and see all of the discoveries of, of tangible heritage that are on display there. Intangible cultural heritage, on the other hand, encompasses the practices, representations, expressions, knowledge and skills that communities, groups and in other some cases, individuals recognize as part of their cultural heritage. When we say intangible cultural heritage, we basically refer to non-material heritage, uh, things that you cannot touch. You talk of uh, uh, um, traditional songs, for instance, you can't touch them. Uh, uh, music, dance, uh, initiation ceremonies, uh, you talk of uh, traditional games, uh, um, knowledge about uh, different things that uh, the communities have generated over a period of time that have also been passed on from, from generation to generation. You talk of the skills for making different uh, objects, artifacts, um, all, all that we refer, refer to as intangible cultural heritage. Intangible cultural heritage is, consists of these three words, intangible, culture, and heritage. Uh, the word culture is the central part. It's a key word. Uh, when we say culture, it's a very vast and elastic word as a concept but in general, it's the way of life of people, in short. It's uh, the way we think, act, in, and interact with people. It's a complex whole uh, that includes like uh, traditions, customs, beliefs, history, uh, monuments, all the materials that we can see, including computers, all things that uh, are produced by the creative uh, 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 the potential of human being. This is more of the, of the expressions, of the practices, of the knowledge, the skills that give a sense of identity to communities, that give them a sense of belonging. It's the identity, it gives meaning to their lives, it's, it's, the, it's the, thing, the songs they sing, it's the, it's the traditions. It's the practices, it's the dances, it's the music, it's um, the, the skills to make instruments and even, even the, the furniture. It's Najera, it's, uh, it's the coffee ceremony. It's these things that really make it, uh, when you come to me who's coming to visit Eritrea, that I can see as very unique as an outsider, but also you as, uh, as parts of these different ethnic communities can also identify this is part of my culture, this is their culture, and things that you can be proud of. In tangible cultural heritage, ICH, or what some call living heritage, encompasses many traditions, practices, and customs. 
These include the stories we tell, the family's events we celebrate, our community gatherings, the language we speak, the songs we sing, the knowledge of our natural spaces, our healing traditions, the foods we eat, our holidays, beliefs and cultural practices. <laughs> It is transmitted from generation to generation and is constantly recreated by communities and groups in response to their environments. It is manifested, among others, in the domains of oral traditions and expressions, including language as a vehicle of intangible cultural heritage, performing arts, social practices, rituals and festive events, knowledge and skills concerning nature and the universe, and traditional craftsmanship. Intangible cultural Heritage is heritage uh, that can be uh, uh, passed from generation to generation and uh, it can be recreated. Also, uh, uh, it is uh, based, in the, on, based on community. The community has to feel like, you know, uh, this is my intangible cultural heritage. Uh, so it's very important in the sense that it uh, gives sense of identity and continuity to the society. Uh, it also creates a platform between societies to understand each other, to create cohesion between uh, people. If they understand each other, they can respect each other. So this intangible cultural heritage is very important in this sense. This is the social uh, importance. Well, it has also economic importance. In the case of economic importance, uh, it's a means of uh, attracting tourists. It is also, you can, for example, uh, sell products such as tickets for performing art, because performing art is one par part of the intangible cultural heritage. Uh, or you can, uh, you can sell also albums. Uh, so in, in this case, uh, commercially it is also important. So we have to uh, safeguard it in this way. The, the focus uh, in our priority is safeguarding. So when we talk about safeguarding, what we're talking about is ensuring the continuity, uh, ensuring that there's this sense of identity, uh, ensuring cultural diversity that uh, with globalization that we don't lose our, our strong cultural identities. It's also very important for social cohesion that there's safeguarding of, of intangible cultural heritage. Um, when we talk about safeguarding, we're talking about transmitting it to future generations. Um, someone gave me the example of a, of a musical instrument called uh, Meleket, this wind instrument. And what they told me is there was one elder in the community that knew how to play this. And he's recently passed away, but he had taught this technique to one of his sons. So in that sense, this is an intangible cultural heritage. This is a knowledge and part of a tradition that could be lost and is in urgent need of safeguarding. And when we say safeguarding, we want to continue to transmit this skill to others so that mm -hmm. we don't lose this, uh, this precious knowledge that's part of a unique uh, cultural identity of, of one of the ethnic groups of Eritrea. <laughs>
uh, inventory for intangible cultural heritage because as I told you, it's a vast area. Uh, so we are trying to inventory some elements from every ethnic group and then it will be uh, invented and evaluated. Communities are the owners of heritage, of the, of the intangible cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. And if the intangible cultural heritage has to be safeguarded, you can't do that minus the communities. So which means on every program that you do, on every program that you design, you ought to involve the communities in terms of planning, in terms of implementation, in terms of any other safeguarding measure that you can think of. The whole essence of this community-based inventoring, it is to train the locals from different cultural communities so that these people, they can actually champion the documentation of their own culture. Because you know, the, I mean, you know your culture better than mm -hmm. I from another community. From a particular community, they'll be at the forefront uh, to actually champion the documentation, the recording of the different uh, cultural traditions, customs, beliefs, uh, skills, knowledges in, uh, uh, from their communities. So that's how it differs from what it used to happen in the past. Eritrea has rich and diverse intangible cultural heritage. Each of the nine ethno-linguistic groups has its own language, folk traditions and living expressions. This has been transmitted from ancestors to descendants from centuries, giving its people a strong sense of identity and continuity. Here in Eritrea, you have nine very distinct ethnic groups. Each of those groups, they have their traditions, their beliefs, they have the skills they know for, for making clothing, furniture, instruments, they have songs, they have traditions. All of that makes up the identity of these groups and their very distinct identity is their intangible cultural heritage. Efforts have been made both by the government and the people of Eritrea to safeguard the nation's invaluable intangible cultural heritage. Holding traditional and national festivals, conducting research on oral traditions through various Eritrean languages, raising the awareness and encouraging the participation of people in safeguarding intangible cultural heritage through media programs, introducing culture and arts into the Eritrean national programs are some of the activities underway. Preparing of legislation of uh, both cultural and natural heritage, uh, it means the legal uh, legal instrument to protect or to safeguard this uh, heritage, both natural and cultural heritage. After that, uh, there was a project which was uh, uh, launched here in collaboration with UNESCO and uh, Cultural Affairs Bureau. Uh, so we uh, tried to uh, give trainings, train on in, intangible cultural heritage, especially uh, community-based inventory. So uh, there was a training for two weeks in capacity building. Uh, this was uh, one of the activities. Uh, beyond that, also, we uh, have different uh, trainings uh, abroad. We send our staff to abroad to participate in different workshops and trainings. Uh, there were a lot of also uh, media coverage on intangible cultural heritage tra training as well as about the legislation. To safeguard your intangible cultural heritage that, that could be considered a best practice and maybe another country could learn from that to help safeguard theirs. So many people have mentioned to me this wonderful festival that you have every August. So the different groups come, you, you have poetry, you have dance, you have music, art. That I would consider a best practice because it encourages people to prepare for the festival. Other people come, they get to be exposed to this. It transmits and it promotes. So. Those are just these three aspects that the convention tries to use as mechanisms for safeguarding. Eritrea is very rich uh, in, in, in culture and particularly uh, in the field of intangible, <coughs> intangible cultural heritage uh, uh, because um, 
before I came here, I had the opportunity of uh, going on the internet uh, to try to learn uh, some of the Eritrean culture. And I discovered that uh, you have got beautiful festivals which you conduct every year, uh, I guess, in Eritrea, where you bring different communities. You talk of the Rashaida, the Kunama, the Tigrinya, Tigre, Saho communities, the, the Nara, uh, all those communities brought together to form a big cultural festival where each cultural community, each community displays what what uh, makes uh, uh, their culture. This is great because in other countries you don't, in most countries, you don't find such things happening. The importance of intangible cultural heritage is not the cultural manifestation itself, but rather the wealth of knowledge and skills that is transmitted through it from one generation to the next. The social and economic value of this transmission of knowledge is relevant for minority groups and for mainstream social groups within a state and is an important for developing states as for developed ones. <laughs> One of the primary ways the public is made aware of intangible cultural heritage and its importance to the culture is through the formal recognition and celebration of the people's cultural practices by including traditional bearers as speakers and leaders in school and community programs. The government of Eritrea has is already doing a lot in this field because uh, just uh, some few years back um, you have just had the, the curriculum revised, reviewed, to include uh, uh, um, um, the cultural uh, traditions uh, as what is Eritrean, so mm -hmm. that our children can actually learn from, from uh, their own stuff. Um, mm -hmm. In the past, what used to happen is uh, most of the materials that we uh, were on the school curriculum were foreign materials. You talk of the Shakespeare's and everything else. We are not against that, but what we are saying is there ought to be a balance whereby we can learn from uh, uh, foreign cultures, but we should we should also don't we should we shouldn't neglect our own culture so that uh, we can also teach our children how our forefathers live uh, uh, used to live and how they ought, they also ought to behave and live uh, uh, in the present uh, setup because. Uh, we need to actually pass on this uh, culture to the next generation so that they can also do the same to the other coming generations. Towns and organizations can recognize ICH in their commemorative activities and award ceremonies to encourage ICH traditional bearers to continue their work and to show that it's valued. So this, this convention, it's a, it's a legal instrument, and in 2003, UNESCO adopted it, and in 2010, Eritrea adopted it. So they adhered to the principles of this convention, which put forward these ideals that there are, that it is very important to safeguard cultural identity and of different groups uh, on a national level. So by signing the convention, Eritrea made this acknowledgement and commitment to safeguard its intangible cultural heritage. So this convention, um, as I said, it sets guidelines, but it also, um, it has another mechanism that looks at listing. So as this convention focuses on safeguarding, one of these lists, there's three linked with this convention, one of these lists asks countries to identify intangible cultural heritage in need of urgent safeguarding. based on the Eritrean cultural and natural heritage legislation, which was officially proclaimed on the 30th of September 2015. Eritrea is committed to implement the 2003 convention in collaboration with UNESCO.
Eritrea's implementation of the Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage, while raising public awareness towards ICH, will play a tremendous impact on the protection of Eritrea's intangible cultural heritage and forwarding them for generations to come. Uh, now, in terms of um, Eritrea, uh, uh, a number of steps uh, have been done already by the government. Uh, in the field of, uh, in the area of protection, for instance, there is a new piece of legislation, I'm told, on uh, uh, culture policy, or, which actually is supposed to guide everybody, the stakeholders, the Commission for Culture and Sports. Um, uh, the, the, the practitioners, the communities, mm -hmm. on how they can safeguard uh, their culture. In terms of um, uh, awareness raising, exactly that's what we are doing at the moment, uh, whereby we have got media houses such as Eritrea TV. Uh, you are actually doing a wonderful job to try to uh, educate the masses out there on on uh, the intangible cultural heritage. The implementation is just a stepping stone towards preserving Eritrea's rich and famous cultural heritage. A collaborative effort of both the government and all citizens is a prerequisite to ensure a sustainable cultural heritage in the country. Eritrea is that uh, it should actually uh, uh, continue uh, uh, leading this process of implementing the convention. It is doing uh, great stuff already. Uh, more still needs to be done. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, uh, you may also wish to know that within the framework of this convention and the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage, there is a provision where a member state, a member state like the state of Eritrea, can nominate, can nominate some of the, uh, some of the intangible cultural heritage, some of the practices, traditions, customs, mm -hmm. on UNESCO's lists. General awareness, so people to begin talking about it, beginning to try to understand uh, what are what are some of these rich intangible cultural heritage you can be proud of. Uh, so the more that you're talking about it, transmitting it, I hope to get this national conversation going, so in the schools, but also at the dinner table and on the weekends when, when people are together. And I think it can really give Eritreans something to be very proud of and something to bring them together. And it also, as we, as we move towards documenting these and getting more information about it, it can also be something to be shared uh, with the world to show this rich and, uh, and valuable heritage that there is here and that Eritrea is working really hard to safeguard. Culture is a very important element, in, especially in uh, development plans, uh, like, you know, the sustainable development. It's a core of uh, those important developments because if there is no cohesion or understanding between societies. If there is conflict between societies, there is no development. Conflict is one of the biggest burden of the uh, development. So intangible cultural heritage, in particular, tries to find a solution for that. So it is very important to include in cultural policies and development plans.